Hi, my name is Abdullah Al Saudi. I'll be presenting EMA Municipal Solid Waste uh, on behalf of Group 8 for the course Civil Engineering 315 Environmental Policy under the supervision of Dr. Mahdi Bakari. So, what is EMA? EMA is the Environmental Management Act that sets out an integrated approach to environmental management in BC and provides a legal framework by defining the roles of provincial, regional, and municipal government. This assignment provides a history of EMA and discusses solid waste related policies in EMA, and they are the following Part 2 Prohibitions and Authorizations, Part 3 Municipal Solid Waste, Part 6.1 Division 2 Greenhouse Gases Generated by Solid Waste. So, what happened before EMA? Legislative members decided that BC's pre-EMA environmental regulations did not properly respond to environmental threats. Due to the fact that pre-EMA pre Act responded to environmental threats in a standardized and a default way to all given situations, despite the magnitude of the Act. For example, the sign regulation geared to a pulp mill could also catch runoff from car washes. Thus, the, the, the legislative uh, reformer's main aim was to replace the existing inflexible act with a flexible system capable of providing a tailored and appropriate responses to any given environmental context. So, in May 2002, a comprehensive review of the provincial government approach to environmental management was prepared by what was the Ministry of Water, Land, and Air Protection. The purpose of, the res of this review was to modernize BC's environmental legislation. This review went into consultation between the government, stakeholders, including industry and public interest groups. This con considerable effort resulted in creating in what's now known as EMA, or Environmental Management Act, by what's now known as the Ministry of Environment. EMA took effect in July 8, 2004. So, part 2 in, in the EMA covers prohibitions and authorizations related to solid waste. This part discusses regulation, permits, approvals for industry, businesses, and trade for the following. Waste disposal, collection, transportation, treatment, and discharge, hazardous waste confinement, transportation, management, and disposal, littering and discharge of waste from recre recreational vehicles, other waste-related permitting and approvals for waste-related activity, Mr. Regulations, Code of Practice. EMA Part 3, Municipal Waste Management. This part describes waste management plans and regulation as well as delegates authority for introducing solid waste into the environment at a municipal level. This, as, this act includes operational certificates, municipal solid waste fees, sewage control areas for landfill generated and leachate management, control of air contaminants in Greater Vancouver, and disposal of municipal solid waste in Greater Vancouver. This part 3 also highlights authority to manage municipal solid waste and recyclable material in regional districts, requires license. These include hauler license, issued by a regional district to a hauler, recycle license, issued by a regional district to the owner or, or operator of a site that accepts and manages recyclable materials, waste system, wa wa waste stream man uh, management license, issued by a regional district, to the owner or operator of a site that accepts and manages municipal solid waste. These licenses allow regulations of types, quality, or quantity of municipal solid waste or recyclable materials, burning of any class, transport of waste, and setting of waste disposal fees. In addition, municipal, waste, uh, municipal solid waste fees regulation are described in the Act, this section outlines the municipal, uh, municipalities may, may exercise the following powers, setting fees payable by persons who use the services of a waste hauler or by generate, generators of municipal solid waste, setting levels of fees based on 
the quantity, volume, or consumption of municipal solid waste generated, the fees charged by the applicable waste hauler or its services, or any other criteria prescribed by regulation. Varying fees by class of person, operators, activities, industries, trades, businesses, works, sites, or municipal solid waste. This portion was taken this portion was taken directly from EMA part 3 section 26. In addition, control of air contaminants and disposal of municipal solid waste in Greater Vancouver. Bylaws under section 3132 may be made to limit the quantity of municipal solid waste and air contaminants or that specifies the characteristics of municipal solid waste and air contaminants, they may be discharged into the environment. If bylaws are not followed, this be considered an offense, punishable by a fine not exceeding $1 million. These bylaws can be overridden by a GVRD, or Greater Vancouver Regional District, and the Administration Board of the Greater Vancouver Sewage and Drainage District. This part, this part covers uh, part six, division division two, a greenhouse ca gas reduction. The owner of the op or or the operator of the waste management facility must manage the specified greenhouse gases produced from waste handled at the at, at the waste management facility. Such gases could include methane, uh, CO two, and other fragrant gases. Regulation purposes. Management of, or reduction of specified greenhouse gases. Recovery of energy from greenhouse gases. Regulating and imposing requirements and prohibitions for the design, activities, and operations related to the management or recovery of, of energy. Imposing monitoring and reporting requirements. So, here are some of our recommendations and professional recommendations uh, from consultants in the solid waste industry. They recommended that pay close attention to smaller communities and rural areas in terms of providing suitable regulations that meet their resources. The waste management facility should aim to capture all gases that are released from waste. Ensure adequate priority in place is placed on the waste re reduction education, including efforts related to reducing waste as its sources. This 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 particular point is really important because if we cut off waste from a source, we will notice an incredible decrease in waste generated, and then there will be less fees towards trying to manage that waste if it didn't exist at all. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, thanks.